first off, I would like to, uh, and I, I, I talked to uh, Ed or Edward, the, you're one of the guys. I'm one of the guys, right? Or, or Kent, Kent. I'm sorry, Kent. And he is absolutely excellent. I have to say that probably the guys know a great deal more about this place than I do. Well, I, I told him that I was here uh, 45 years ago and um, told him that, um, that uh, I had written to uh, your father mm -hmm. and he, um, and that time the castle wasn't open and I said I'm going to be leaving Scotland but I'd like to see the castle. And he wrote back a very, very nice note saying, you know. Well, was it, wasn't open because it was during the winter or? Uh, I think it was in the uh, end of March or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's because we, we opened from sort of April through to, well, in those days it was September. But the castle was the first, first major private house in Scotland to be open to the public in 1953. So that was done by my grandfather. Well, your, your father was was very, very nice. He wrote back and said, uh, my castle is your castle. And come in and took me around. Uh, and, uh, I can take me to your private section. To, uh, and you must have been just born. I was born in 1968. I was there in, in the late spring of 1969. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was, you know, that was, uh, well, I suppose, I mean, so if you, if you were here in 69, uh, my grandfather didn't die until, in, until 73. So you might have had my grandfather because my father and my grandfather didn't speak. Uh, and we didn't move up here to Nvrao until my grandfather had died. Well, well which one of them, uh, and Ken, was so... Let's see if I can pick that up. Let's see if I can pick that up. Ken said, uh, I said that I, I talked to what I thought was your father and that he worked for IBM. Um, and he said, no. He worked for Xerox. And he, well, no, that would have been my father. Be my father. <laughs> so, but I mean, you know, you, you obviously, you really were sort of caught, caught him on an off day because so we, didn't, we didn't move here until, until much, much later. You know, just, just to help me, give me some ideas of some of the questions you're going to ask as well. And 45 years ago, they didn't have those. I just like, you sort of, um, I got any pictures in here. My wife's been updating it now, I can't see that. But, um, yeah, no, so, you know, we didn't move here until the sort of 1973. Did your grandfather live in the castle? He, he sort of, he was, he, he lived around and about. He was, uh, he was, um, well, I mean, he was who he was and he did what he did and uh, he's quite infamous for his four, four wives that he had. Oh, okay. And, uh, you yeah. know. Well, there, there are several things that I would like to, um, I, I know you know, I've done some research for years about the name, uh, can you mean something about the right now, the crooked mouth? Crooked mouth now. Um, but I have never gotten a, uh, a good answer to um, don't forget or forget not. And near the Viscars, the, the family motto, um, I, don't, I mean, I don't really know where it sort of, it sort of, you know, comes into sort of dates of origin. But, you know, the Campbells were a very, very powerful force in Scotland for a very considerable amount of time. Mm. Um, and whether it sort of came in when they were coming to you know, their, their, their strengths. I mean, the Campbells, you know, they started sort of, you know, uh, mid-1200s, over the hill from here on the hall. Mm -hmm. And through marriages, through uh, allegiances, through supporting, dare I say, the right side at the right time, uh, grew their power base really quite quickly. Um, and you know, and I think the sort of the politics of the family have pretty much remained unchanged, uh, apart from a little blip with the eighth Earl, who supported Cromwell, uh, was later beheaded. His son was beheaded uh, before the titles were then given back to the family. Um, but pretty much, you know, throughout history, the Argyle family or the Campbell family 
have been very, very strong royalists. And uh, I certainly say that tradition carries on today, and it's become to be you know, quite an important feature in Scottish politics uh, at the moment. What about the, uh, and, uh, and I said in my email to you that um, I edit this, and my webmaster will edit it, and if there's something that you don't know yeah. in the discussion, you say I want to discuss it, and it'll be edited. And, and I put this up on my webpage for my teaching, and I'm not going to put up an argument that <laughs> comes up. The, and, 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 and I thought about a way that we could, uh, we could deal with this issue about um, the devolution issue, uh, the referendum issue, and, and, and instead of pushing, putting you in a spot of um, delineating how you feel about it. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not ashamed of my views. Well, I'm just um, saying. And my views are my views. If anyone wants to listen to them, they're more than happy to do so. Okay, then, then what would you... Um, how do you feel about? You well, I mean, you know, I mean, it was a, you know, I mean, I, you know, my views are based on you know many different things, which I'm sure we can discuss. But at the end of the day, I am a pro together or better together uh, than so I'm against uh, uh, devolution. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, I think it would be a very difficult system to run. Um, and as I said, you know, throughout history, the, the, the family have been very strong royalist supporters. And uh, I hold the, the Union in great admiration. My ancestors were part of signing the Act of Union. And I think, you know, it would just be a grave mistake to, to break up something that works very well. And of course, you know, throughout history, throughout politics, you have your, your highs and your lows. Uh, economy, etc., etc., is is not good at the moment, and you know I think people might rush into making a judgment that's more of a spare of the moment judgment rather than a long term view. Uh, and I think, or well, my view at the moment is that the majority of people will vote against it, will yeah. vote for you know, you know better together. Um, but I think you know, now, is the, now is the chance, now is the opportunity for everybody to speak up and you know, table these ideas. And I was very interested uh, you know, watching a news program the other day, and it was about uh, the, Labour, the Scottish Labour Party conference. And there was a young girl who stood up on the podium and she was, I guess, just 15. And she will be one of the youngest people that is allowed to vote mm -hmm. uh, in the rest of the that has gone through. And you know, there she was, you know, advocating, you know, the better together, the union, and you know, her view was that within the younger generation, so the sixteen year olds, uh, sixteen, seventeen year olds, that they thought that you know the union was better. So I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult to tell. Uh, I was surprised at, 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 the, at the political parties in um, in Scotland. The only one that really is demonstrably pro devolution is the Scottish National Party. I don't, there aren't very many strong people on the other party. No, no, no. It is, it, it is, it is something that has uh, come about with uh, uh, the Scottish National Party. Actually, you know, I mean, we're all, we're all entitled to our views. And they are the biggest party in Scotland. They have uh, um, an outright majority in the um, in Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood sorry. Uh, so I think you know they're entitled to, to ask a question. But I mean, I have to believe that you know the better together, the union is very very strong. And you know, hopefully at the end of the day, if we all speak out, uh, if we all join. Uh, a sensible argument uh, and a structured argument rather than, you know, uh, throwing names and being rude to each other, then, you know, we can have a civilized discussion about it. In, 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 in my province, I know Irving is pretty well, even though I'm Scottish, Scottish history is not. Mm -hmm. I know more Scottish history than most people in the United States, but not enough. Wasn't there a vote in 1976 to the evolution and it got up to something like the uh, 46 or 47 percent. If you say so. <laughs> I 
I wear this on places. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I have to say, my, 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 my knowledge and that sort of stuff is, 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 is pretty limited. But I mean, it, you know, it's, you know we, we are, we're a country. It's, 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 you know, it's, I think you're perfectly uh, right to be able to answer, ask the question. Um, I just have to, I just you know, think it is, it's a non-likable option. Now, I've asked, uh, and, and you and you and uh, one other gentleman down in Glasgow, who I prize your intellectual ability, um, I didn't have an interview with some of him, but I've talked to numerous people um, on my own, I mean, all over the place, in Edinburgh, um, in Sterling, all over, and I, if, if I had to take a poll, it would be that Probably half the people would like to see the evolution, but they're afraid of it. They're afraid economically that they would get hurt. Yeah. Um, and they just. I mean, I think you know. I think one of one of the issues at the moment is that people don't know enough about it. I think the uh, the SNP are keeping quite a lot of cards close to their chest, maybe they don't have the answers for it, maybe the answers don't make sense. So I don't think at the moment people are able to make a rational decision based on fact. You know, there is one page, there is another. Compare the two together, you choose. Uh, and I don't think yet that argument is there. It's a lot of you know, people standing up in a, uh, on a box, shouting their heads off and saying, mm -hmm, this, that, that. So until we have that, you know, rational argument put in front of us, you know, you make the choices. But I think, you know, financially, very, very difficult. Um, you know, you can go from uh, talking about, uh, you know, a Scotch whiskey to oil to taxation down to, you know, how much is it going to cost you to send a letter in the post to... Well, they're arguing about whether they keep a pound or not. Um, well, that, that of course is a, is, is a, is a very justified you know, comment. Uh, down to you know things like sort of uh, embassies around the world. You know, we will no longer be part of the British embassy. You will have to have a Scottish embassy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of things. That, I mean, I think you know a lot of people don't actually think about it. It's not. It's you know, it's not written down in front of them. They can't make a they can't make a rational decision on it until they've got the facts. And, and it's also surprising the number of people who just have not read very much about it at all, who are Scottish. I think, you know, I, you know, one of the things that upsets some people is that there are Scots all over the world. I mean, you know, we're a great nation of travellers. Yet the only people that are going to be allowed to vote on the future of Scotland are the people that are actually living in the country at that moment in time. Right or wrong, I mean, I'm not going to give you an answer to it. But I mean, I think well, you know, I mean, it's you know, it's it, the country belongs to more than just the people who are living in it. You know, so I don't want to write the book for that. No, I know, but I mean, you know, there are there are you know, uh, you know, Scots who are working abroad. There are Scots who are living abroad, but they have no right to vote. Well, they don't. They don't. No, you've got to be living in the country. On the so if I'm a citizen of Scotland, the UK. Living in the states, I may, know. maybe on a you know a one year, a one year posting to the states, you are not entitled to vote. And, and who's uh, who's who wrote that book? Well, I mean, it's the Scottish National Party, and that's you know they've, they've got to sort of you know define who who is actually entitled to vote. Uh, so I think you know, and it brings up it brings up a lot of issues. Um, First thing, you know, this, you know, we still got a bit of time left. But I mean, you know, I asked, I asked one, uh, one person the other day for a, you know, sort of a heads up on, you know, what his views were. Uh, and I hasten that he is a politician as well. And he said, well, you know, you can argue the politics, you can argue the arguments, but a very good judge of the feeling of the country is to go into a bookmaker and ask where the money is. Yeah, and, and part of my problem is that I come from the, the States, and we have, and, and we have, a, at least I have the mentality, 
that the UK is like the United States and that we have states like New York, Illinois, mm-hmm. Indiana, and you have states like England, Wales, and yeah. Rhode Island, so. And America is really politically onto the left of center. And, and I think that we are too much into states' rights. Um, but the issue for me is that when I was in, in Edinburgh, it seemed like, and I don't know what it is now, so that's what I'm going to ask you, it seemed like the only real states' rights that the Scots had had to do with education. That they, that, that the British or the, the UK had a different mindset about what a country was, and that it seemed to channel more into Westminster than it did to each of the state capitals like Edinburgh. Yeah, I, mean, I think you know, I mean, each 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 of the states, as you put it, so you know, um, uh, Wales, Ireland, and Scotland, they have devolved powers, so they have a level of power that they can administer. Uh, but that is not total power. Uh, and the overall view of the country and the way forward of the Union or Great Britain uh, is decided by Westminster. And you know, you can see you know, why a lot of the Scots get upset, because the Scots are not terribly well represented in Westminster. There's not very not very uh, many ministers. Uh, and there's certainly uh, not very many conservative ministers. So, you know, you've got a conservative government that's running the country, and I'm very pro-conservative. Um, but, you know, we don't have very many members of the government in Scotland. But is that, it, I mean, how, how, how does, I mean, I don't, I do not know, how does um, Scotland, Wales, England, Northern Ireland, how do you get parliamentary Representatives, isn't that based upon the population? It's, it's, it's based, but well, not so much population, it's based on, on areas. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, there is a, an element of population and scaling it, but you know, we've obviously we've got MPs in Scotland, but what I was actually trying to say to you is that we don't have very many uh, Conservative MPs. So you've got, a, um, you've got a government that's running the country, yet they have almost no representation from Scotland. I mean, you can see, see, you know, where, uh, why people might feel that they're not being represented, and um, why? Because I mean, Scotland is uh, at the moment quite heavily pro the Scottish National Party. Um, well, they may be pro, but they certainly don't have. I, mean, I don't think Salmon is. I don't think he. The stuff I've read, I don't think he thinks that they have 40% of the vote yet. No, so I, no I, I, have to, you know, I have to believe in myself that uh, it, it, won't, it won't come to that. And you know, I will do my best to, to support the uh, pro-union uh, in whatever way I can. What would your, um, and this is kind of a, a really a pointed question, so... Um, what would you say to somebody who said that um, that the, the British Empire, which is not the name of it now, but the British Empire has devolved over since Victoria or since World War One down to um, Wales, England, Scotland, and, and Northern Ireland if they get their Catholic Protestant nonsense settled, that would be out. Um, these all evolved out into some kind of whatever they're doing in Ireland. And the only other countries or only other places in the world that the sun sets on or doesn't set on, Gibraltar ain't part of Antarctica, Antarctica, um, the dozen islands scattered in the Caribbean and in, in, in the ocean, things like that. It just seems like, and, and, and initially when, when I heard about the devolution issue, I thought, hey, you guys were all moving to the Euro zone or Union, and why mess around with devolution of a country within a country as it's moving to a larger global group? Uh, the European 
communities larger population wise in the United States. And it's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't quite see why they want to get out of Greater uh, Britain in the UK. But then I started thinking about what, what I saw in Scotland 45 years ago. And what I don't understand is how much they have changed. Over, over your lifetime and over my adult life. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm not sure. It, I mean, it looks like the great, great Britain is Northern Ireland who can't get their, can't figure their thing out yet. Scots who can't figure out their related relationship. Wales seems to be very close to England and has no real interest in yeah. But outside of that, there's really not much left of what used to be the largest empire in the world. What would your response to? It, it seems like it's moving in a direction that is changing and dissolving or becoming smaller. And um, I'm trying to show what your question is, but. I don't know, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't think, we're not, we're not talking about uh, the British Empire, we're not talking about the Commonwealth, we're talking about Great Britain. We are one island, or one and a bit island, um, and you know, we have successfully been together for several hundred years, and I don't think there's any need to change it. You know, we are one nation, uh, one people. Yes, we're part of the European Union, but I don't see um, at any near time or any time in the future that, um, that Great Britain joins the Euro. Um, and I think, you know... Do you think the European Union will... the underbelly of the European Union is, you know, Greece and Italy and Cyprus and, and even Spain and Portugal are having a control. Do you think that they will stay together? Time will tell us if you know if, if you know we've got the if we've got the money as a union to to bail them out. I mean, it's the you know the problem that you have with a group of countries that are so incredibly different. You know whether you have you know the industrialised centres of you know Germany etc. and you've got the you know the poor agricultural parts of Spain, Portugal, Greece. Very difficult to you know match them together. But you know the issue here is is Great Britain. Should Scotland be independent? Uh, will Scotland be better independently? And my view on that is no. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that will say yes, but my view is no. However, should uh, the population of Scotland vote for an independent country, then I will, you know, have to work with it. And I can't, you know, keep moving. I can't, I can't pack up my business and go somewhere else. Um, I mean, I spend, uh, I spend, I have spent, and I do spend a lot of time working in the Scotch whisky industry. And, you know, we have got to work with the Scottish government, whatever happens. We can't pack up our distilleries and move them somewhere else because it will no longer be Scotch whisky. It has to be made in Scotland. We are in Scotland for the long term. And you know, so am I as uh, a family and as a business. Um, you know, there have been over the years many political upheavals, many changes, and you know, a family like mine have been around for a long time. A family like yours, you know, we're all part of the same family. Uh, and I think you have to, you know, ride the rough for the smooth. Yeah, it's uh, it, it amazed me when I came here 45 years later. How much the council, as far as other candles coming in here to visit, or other people who happen to know the candle claim mm -hmm. that come in, it's amazing how much of a quote unquote cottage industry this is created in here because there's a lot of people working here that are very dedicated. I'll tell you, Kenneth, or Ken, or whatever you call him, and D are two of your best. D talked to me for 15 minutes at the gate mm -hmm. when we first came in a couple of days ago. And uh, Ken is just... No, I mean, you know, we, you know, I pride 
And my wife and I pride ourselves on the fact that this is not a museum, it's a family house. We live in it. And, you know, I am absolutely delighted to be able to share it with people who come here. Yes, we're running a business, but at the same time, you know, we're trying to keep the roof on it. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's an expensive outfit to run. Um, and if, it, if that's how, if that's the business model that we use, and if that's how we're able to maintain it and open it to the public and show it as a tourist attraction, um, as you know, a place where people can come and trace their ancestry, uh, so be it. I mean, I think that's that's wonderful. You know, we try and tick as many boxes as we possibly can. And you know, you talk about the change from you know 45 years ago to today. Well, I think you know what underlies that change is people's ability to travel. You know, when you came here 45 years ago, you know, you were at the forefront of, you know, of, of tourism because it just really wasn't, it wasn't there. Whereas today, we're one of the biggest tourist attractions in the west coast of Scotland. Uh, we welcome, you know, well over 80,000 tourists through the cast in a year and a huge amount of cameras because they have the ability to come and travel. It's whether they're independent travellers, whether they're on a, a tour group, uh, we get a lot of uh, cruise ship business as well, uh, from, from the US, from Canada, from around the world. So people can get here relatively easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there is a huge upsurgence in interest in people's ancestry at the moment. I mean, people, it's very easy for people to, to do it on the internet, to find out where they came from. And, you know, it, it creates a sense of, of belonging, of, uh, you know, of oneness. Um, I mean, I have to say that I am truly Scottish, but my grandmother was American. So, you know, it's, things get swings and roundabouts. It's, uh, it is true, that, and, and, and especially since uh, Brian Sykes, uh, at, I think he's at Oxford, came up with a DNA trace, he wrote a book called uh, The Seven Daughters of Yeah. And it's interesting how deeply we're involved in trying to figure out which where we came from out of Africa and which which of the seven women yeah. of the microcondyl DNA. And uh, and it, and it, and it strikes me as kind of interesting that we're so into racism and ethnicity when in fact we're all they can trace us back to seven women mm -hmm. and it would be less if they could trace us back. And it just makes it just makes the world very small. No. It does, even though we're going to fight each other. And you talk about you know, the seven degrees of separation or whatever. Right? You know, I mean, we can all, you know, we can all, you know, it's a small world. It's, uh, it's, it's a uh, interesting uh, process. The, um, the only other question I have for you is, um, I'm not a, I, what I'd like to know is, is that you're in charge of your, um, your castle and your lands. Do you have to have any political involvement in inter politics? Do you, do you have do you have to go to meetings there? Or is there some? <laughs> a good, a good, a very good question. Um, the answer to that is yes, and the answer to that is no. <laughs> um, uh, the the no side of it is that no, I'm not a, I'm not involved in any local political party. Um, however, you know, we have, this part of the world is very, very much based on tourism and there are several tourist organisations that we, we sit on to help try and steer the area in, in, in the right direction. It's not my decision, it's not my wife's decision, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's decided by the community, so to speak, or the, the tourist businesses within the community. Um, and to a certain extent, there aren't politics involved in that, uh, whether it's with the local council, whether it's you know, the uh, uh, minister for tourism. Uh, so, yes, and no is the answer. But you know, but uh, no. I mean, we, you know, we do we do what we can to promote the area, to bring people in, and to try and create a positive environment, uh, uh, an environment where we can employ people and generate more income for the area be it you know, a tourist business like mine, be it the local hotels, restaurants, bed and breakfast, shops, 
And I think, you know, the role that I have is that I have probably a, a slightly greater ability to pull things into the area than some other people. You know, we've got a wonderful location here, uh, and we can attract people to Edinburgh, to the castle, for events that you know you might not take place in the town, but the town would very, be very much part of an event that takes place here. Uh, so we're all there working together. It is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a communal effort, um, and you know the castle brings people into the west coast of Scotland and the local community can service the demand be it beds, be it food, be it you know, whatever that, that we help generate. So it's, it's, not, it's not all me, but you know, I have, a, I have a, a great place here that can play a major part uh, in the local economy. Yeah, it's, a, it's a beautiful place. And I remember coming here the first time and just being overwhelmed by the size, and you know, I think there's lots of castles, mm -hmm. but there's Ain't many castles like this in Scotland. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a very different castle. And we were, you know, I mean, I think when people ask the question, when was it built? I said, well, you know, first stone, the first stone was laid in 1746. Um, and it's not actually a castle, it's a palace, because the definition of a castle is a fortified house, and this was never fortified. Uh, and I go, oh, crikey, you know. And I said, well, you know, it's a, it's a very modern castle, you know. <laughs> I like, go, oh, crikey, and especially when you speak to Americans about that's the one I live in one of the most modern castles in Scotland. And they look at me and think, crikey, is this guy mad? Um, so, you know, it is, it is very different, it looks very different. It's uh, very, very unique. I mean, we've just done um, Downton Abbey, which is obviously a, a big, big program in the US, very popular over here. Uh, and, you know, it's, Inverara is a wonderful backdrop for it. Uh, and it shows the place to its best. Uh, and I didn't do that for money, I did it for the publicity and to attract more people to come to the area. Because, you know, film locations don't really pay these days. So that was the reason that I did it. So my wife and I are both very, uh, we both come from sort of PR back backgrounds. And anything that we can do to promote the castle, promote the area, promote Scotland, uh, in my case, promote whiskey, uh, you know, that's what I do. And, and speaking of your wife, uh, how did you meet on her? Um, well, through my sister, actually. I have a younger sister, and uh, I met my wife through my sister. I, I just assumed that she, she has ties with the, the candy company. Um, she or is part of, she, well, she, well, she is, she's, uh, before we were married, she, she was a cadre. Uh, so, uh, um, Great grandfather started Cadbury's in Birmingham, um, but today they no longer have a family involvement because it belongs to Kraft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> An American government. An American government. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate this, and uh, you know, I've, I've interviewed some fairly important people for my lifetime, and uh, this is uh, going to be added to the list. And, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. To and, and it's just, and, and it's the last time I'm going to say this, it, it, it's amazing to me how you were very much like your father. And I don't, I don't know what your relationship with your father was. Well, I mean, I, you know, and I think, you know, when you, when you, when you sort of, you know, we, we sort of talked about some history and stuff like that, I think, you know, everyone is an individual. Um, my father uh, was very much a sort of an indoor person. He was you know, big into the family history, he was big into books, uh, big into everything that went on from a historical point of view with the clan. Um, I've always been a much more outdoor person. You know, we have a very, very big estate here, a lot of land, a lot of businesses, uh, and I always consider that pretty much every minute that I'm sitting inside, especially when the sun shining, is a moment wasted. <laughs> Going to change in another 10 or 15 minutes. No, I mean, you know, we all do what, what, it, what, you know, what we enjoy. Uh, as I said, I'm very much more hands on outdoor person. Uh, I spend sort of, you know, less time going through the family archives and stuff than my father did. But, you know, maybe when I'm older, uh, I'll dedicate more of my time to that. Well, 
and, and, and that's and that's an aside. But I'm I'm telling you that that, that he was, and and when he first said, you know, when we wrote back to him, he said, uh, "My counsel is your counsel." I thought that was the kind of nice thing to say. It was kind of politically correct. You know, it was, it was a nice thing to say, but it's, he really didn't have to do anything. He didn't have to return the request. And when I went in there and talked to him for the first time, I thought, you know, that wasn't just a cute little saying he threw out to me. It was how he felt. And, and what's interesting, and I'd like to have your response to it, I'm not sure if you're very history, but the fact that some outsider, even with my last name, could come in and email you and say what I said and want to come back here and mm-hmm. talk to you like I talked to your father. It just, um, uh, when, when you, and I think I wrote back to one of, your, one of the emails, something about you're just like your father. That was a compliment to you for your willingness and openness as he was when you were little. Not those kids running around the castle. No, I mean, you know, I mean, the, the Campbell family is a very big family. Uh, you know, as the clan chief of the Campbells, there is, you know, there's an obligation with the position to, you know, allow people to come and speak to you. Uh, and I thoroughly enjoy being able to talk to Campbells around them. They made the effort to come here. Uh, and the very least you can do, what I can do, is to, you know, Give them the time they back. And there was a wonderful story of my father. So it was 1975 after the castle of Van Dam, Van Fire, took the roof off. And my mother and my father, you know, struggled and the estate struggled to get the money together to put the castle back together again. So they had a, an appeal that went out across the, across the world to Campbell's and asking them for donations to help put the castle back together again. One of the schemes that came up was that you, know, you could buy a slate for the roof for £10 or whatever. And I can't remember where the candle came from. Anyway, she donated £10 to, to the fund. And, um, and then many years later, she unfortunately had a fire in her house. So she wrote to my father and said, you know, would you make a donation of £10 to put my roof back on? And he did. And it's, I mean, I think that's just the one thing, you know, because you might just think, Pff. but, you know, all these letters, Campbell's, you know, when they come in, we do read them. It's not as if, you know, we're all part of one big family. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, if there are Campbell's that need help, then, you know, I think we should all be together. And uh, the, the Latin phrase about, um, when I saw your coat of arms, it had that at the bottom. So we've got near the scarves. Yeah. And there was another one you put in your email, I didn't know where that came from. <laughs> no, no, I thought this was uh, something about... Um... I gave up Latin, the first available opportunity at school, so... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was something about, uh, I, I scarcely call these things my own. Um, uh, but I do appreciate you. Uh, no, it's no, 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 an absolute pleasure. I, I really do appreciate it, and, uh, and if you're... Um, this is this is going to sound like your father now. If your children, if you or owner ever gets to the United States outside of Chicago, we live and we live on a lake. Also, we don't call it a lot because it's kind of a man-made lake. But uh, if your children uh, or you or your wife ever gets to the United States and in Chicago, I did the states quite often. Chicago, I've never actually, I've never actually been to Chicago. Off the states, about well, two weeks time. But. Uh, I was there last week, so I don't have time to <laughs> uh, You sometimes uh, But thank you for a very kind of, very kind of friend. When I, when I get back, I'll be up in the rest, and then come down the East Coast and then go back home, so I'll be here for a couple more weeks. But um, if, if ever, uh, when, when I get home, I'll have my webmaster put this up, and then I'll let you know when it's up. Yeah, great. I really do okay. appreciate it. No, I see it's like 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 it